In this video, I'm going to show you the four steps I followed to be a programmer. And by the way, this is not going to be one of those videos where I promise you you're going to make 10K a month or be a programmer in four months. If you want one of those videos, then go to those tech influencers that like promise you things and are trying to sell you $3,000 courses. This is simply a video on how I went from not being able to code to being a full stack developer. So the first thing I did to become a programmer was set and pick a goal. And before you click off this video, because I'm talking about setting goals, let me tell you this. When you want to go somewhere new, maybe it's like a new destination or you're in a new country and you're trying to go from like point A to point B, don't you need some sort of GPS or map to go from one place to another? Obviously, yes, because you don't know the area that you're in and you don't know where you're going to go. This is exactly what you need to do for your programming journey. And for any success I have had in life from programming, to starting businesses to relationships, I was able to have a clear goal and find out what I need to do to get to that end goal. And so coming back to our programming example, set a goal of what you want. Is it software development? Is it game development? Is it backend development? Just pick and have an idea of what you want at the end goal so you can know what exactly you need to do. And the second aspect of this picking a goal is to pick a language that you need to learn. So for example, let's say I know that my goal is to be a software developer. I do some research and I find out that I need to learn JavaScript as my main language. And for you, that may be different, but just find out what exactly you need to do. And don't be a Gilbert here. Do the research so you know exactly what you need. Now, the second thing I did in my programming journey was build out my routine. Oh my God, a routine is our no. And I know this is really new to you and you don't really know why I'm talking about routine and setting goals. But again, a routine is really critical to being a coder. And just to show you how impactful a routine is, earlier on in my programming journey, maybe like two or three months into it, I used to code for maybe 30 minutes three days a week that amounted to maybe an hour and a half or two hours per week. And at that time, although I was coding for such a little amount, I was, I was always ask myself like, why do I suck at code? And it wasn't until I realized that I needed to code more and do more is when I started seeing the exponential growth. And so for you, now that you have your language and your end goal, build out your routine. And of course, this is personal preference, but all I do is code for maybe two, three hours per day. This is what I personally like to do and what has worked for me in the long term. But a quick word, just pick something that you can do for the rest of your life. If that's 30 minutes a day, then it's 30 minutes a day. If it's three, four hours a day, then do three, four hours a day. But just pick something you can do forever because that way you will see the results in the long term and give yourself enough time to reach that goal. Now, the third thing I did to become a programmer was learn the basics with the expectation that I will suck. And the basics of code is simply things that all programming languages and concepts have. And as a new coder, you'll probably want to go to a place like Free Code Camp, The Odin Project, or CS50. I'll leave all of those somewhere below. And this is the hardest part to this day of my programming journey because everything is so new and you don't even know the most basic things. Like you're basically learning a new language, literally, you have to find it within yourself to stick through it. And that is why we went through the routine and the end goal by having those things, this becomes a lot easier. And basically in this step, just do the work in front of you without expecting a thing. You'll probably be the same coder in month one and month three. And in my case, I simply did like free code camp, CS50 and the Odin project. And I just allowed myself to be ingrained into the platform and allowed myself to learn the things with humility rather than expecting to be a top programmer. And one more word here, okay? By allowing yourself to be ingrained into the basics and letting yourself be really bad at the thing, you will let yourself be better in the long term. A lot of us want to be good programmers, but forget that to be a good programmer, we have to get really good at the foundational things that build us up. That is why people always refer to like the foundation of a house as the most important thing. It is the base of a house is the most important part of the house because it holds it together. And by learning the basics and just allowing yourself to be in it, being really bad and accepting that will give you the biggest boost in the future. And now the final step I followed to be a programmer is projects and application. And you know, this part isn't really delved deeper in our space. Like, yes, people will tell you to do projects, but no one really tells you the importance of doing projects. Like I was talking to a computer science student the other day and she booked a call with me because she was a third year student in university and did not know how to code. 
and she was really worried that she was gonna graduate, get an internship, and like not know how to code. And you know, we talked and she realized that she was not doing well because she was not working on the coding skill itself. And you know, universities as a whole, what I have a big problem with is that they're very focused on theories, software architecture, software design, systems. And yes, those are integral to coding. They make coding important and building stuff better. But where 99% of the true learning will come from is by experiencing coding in real time through projects. I have met seven, now eight after this person that I talked to, computer science students that are about to graduate or are graduated and still don't know how to code. If that doesn't tell you the importance of projects, then I don't know what will. And so here is where you're gonna want to sit at your computer, turn off every learning platform, turn off every YouTube channel, even mine, and just code. And because you went through the basics, maybe you wanted to be a software developer, so you did HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you have a rough idea of what you need to do. However, you don't know enough to actually be a programmer and by applying it, that is where you will be a programmer. So just pick something you find interesting and build it. One of my first projects was a book tracker application where you can input like the author's name and like a rating of the book. It was a very basic like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript project. But what was very interesting was that I learned more from that project than I did from an entire paid course. And that is the true value of a project. You just learn more because you're in the trenches, literally. And I know I'm really honed in on this, but I'm telling you, you can do whatever you want with the basics. You can skip over that for God's sake, but you cannot skip over the projects and application. So many people do, and they wonder why they're not programmers. And by constantly just reminding yourself that coding is a skill that you get better at by doing more, that is how you will improve. So again, pick a goal, learn the basics and do projects. By following this outline, I I literally became a programmer. I'm a, I'm a full stack developer now and I am building projects. If you want to join our Discord community where we have everything from business opportunities, job opportunities, meme pages, just a lot of fun in the community, then I'll leave that somewhere below. We are at like 550 people now, which is like, you know, really crazy. And I'll also leave the web developer roadmap, which is free. And yeah, happy coding. Good luck. And if you have any questions, let me know down below. I'll, I'll try to answer your comments. Okay. Happy coding. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.